Hey, it's Abdullah Samir. It appears we may have caught the so-called Imam of Peace, Imam Tawhidi, using a manufactured death fatwa in order to gain notoriety and sell more copies of his book. Now, why would two ex-Muslims want to defend a Muslim Imam in Pakistan? Because we don't want an innocent man to be put on a watch list or be treated with suspicion or go to jail for something he didn't do. We care about the truth, we care about a justified criticism of Islam and not an unsubstantiated hatred or bigotry of Muslims. So I present you Sharik. Hi, my name is Sharik and I'm um, making this video with Abdullah Samir. And it's as a sort of follow up to this article that was uh, a blog post that was published by Abdullah Samir recently with incorporating my inputs about Imam Tohidi. Now, if you're not familiar with Imam Tohidi, please do look that article up. There should be a link available along with this video. Uh, but basically, to summarize very quickly, uh, Imam Tohidi is this uh, Imam based in Australia who has uh, a reformist uh, reputation. Uh, and um, he's just recently written a book called The Tragedy of Islam uh, Admissions by a Muslim Imam. And so, this book came out a few weeks ago, apparently, on, on Amazon. And um, there was a Daily Mail article that was published on the 16th of December. Um, saying that Imam Tohidi has received a death threat, a death fatwa, uh, in response to his book uh, from a cleric in in Pakistan. Now, I've always felt that there's something about Imam Tohidi in in general that doesn't quite add up, uh, which isn't just my view. It's um, you know there've been many newspaper articles and there are many websites and blog posts dedicated to this. Um, that, so I didn't want to really talk about things that have been said but there was something about this particular episode in general that didn't quite make sense to me so i decided to look into it so the article in the daily mail showed the post by this mufti sialvi in pakistan and which had uh, a photograph a screenshot of the of the fatwa along with the translation in english which is like which is there in the daily mail article you can take a look uh, yourself and uh, and a photograph of the imam quite obviously pulled off his Facebook, and um, went on to say that Imam Tawhidi has had to go into hiding because of this um, because of this um, death fatwa. So I'm just going to quickly read the tweets that um, Imam Tawhidi put out about this fatwa on the 15th of December, the day before the article. Uh, he tweeted. Yesterday, a death fatwa was issued against me by Mufti Sialvi of Pakistan. First, I thank the officials who contacted me expressing their concerns and support. I've put all future meetings and events on hold until further notice. I'll come out of this much stronger. And along with, with this tweet were the same posts um, that were reproduced in the Daily Mail, the fatwa itself, the English translation, and the photograph of the Mufti. Uh, the same day, he also tweeted some photographs, uh, which to me look like photographs of this mufti with some friends at some sort of event where a lot of people are walking around looking at Air, Air Force, Pakistan Air Force uh, planes. But Imam Tohidi tweeted these uh, photographs, obviously pulled from, again, the mufti's Facebook, saying, uh, these are the terrorists that arranged and issued the death fatwa against me. As you can see, they are affiliated with Pakistan Army and Air Force. Um, the next day, he also tweeted, uh, The Mufti who issued the death fatwa against me yesterday was recently welcomed into the UK where he preached at a mosque. Thank you, Theresa May. So he tagged Theresa May, the Prime Minister of the UK. And this was actually a retweet of a post by Robert Spencer from an outfit called Jihad Watch. Um, which said, interesting point, Mufti Sialvi was recently welcomed into the UK where he spoke at a mosque, and he's got a link to a Jihad Watch article about that. The May government bans foes of Jihad terror but welcomes in Muslim preachers who call for murder. And he in turn had retweeted Imam Tohidi's tweet about this particular death threat. So this is the sort of thing that went on on Twitter about this from... Uh, 
um, Imam Tawhidi's account. And one more tweet that I'd like to highlight after retweeting Robert Spencer's tweet. He also tweeted, uh, I'm not someone that can be silenced with fake news, character assassination attempts, or even a death fatwa. These tactics only work against people with weak foundations and principles. Let them waste their own time. I'm not going anywhere. And he also tweeted, Clarification, I have not gone into hiding since the death fatwa. I've actually gone hiking. I've put my meetings and events on hold to review my security detail. I've only been outspoken for two years. Those who claim I'm hiding don't realize that this is just the beginning. Uh, he had also tweeted in the past, in, in November, on the 13th of November, saying, if I get killed, it's because of this book. So it was almost sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts. So here's what I found problematic about the whole thing. And when I took a closer look at the fatwa, the screenshot that was included with this uh, article, um, I noticed a few things. It was, firstly, the, the fatwa itself just had a very simple title on there saying, Sharia fatwa. Now, I don't know if you've ever looked at a fatwa, but I can ask, I can ask you to do this right now. Go to Google, click on images, or do a Google images search. Just put in, what does a fatwa look like? And just see for yourself what a typical fatwa by a mufti who's you know authorized or, or has the stature to give opinions on Islamic Sharia matters, applications of, of Islamic law. Uh, just just take a look at what this looks like as opposed to the Sharia, the, the fatwa which was issued by this, supposedly issued by this cleric in Pakistan. Um, secondly, I noticed that this fatwa is actually in Arabic which has a script very similar to that of Urdu, which is the language most commonly spoken in Pakistan, which is the official language of Pakistan, and which is really the language that I would expect a mufti in Pakistan to be communicating in. And also I noticed, it's a minor point, but I noticed that the name in Arabic, instead of Mufti Ahmed Raza Siyalvi, uh, the, the mufti that um, Imam Tawhidi said had issued this fatwa, it actually said Mufti Ahmed Raza Alvi, not Si Alvi. So these are the things that sort of bothered me. Um, and, you know, I took a look at this Mufti's uh, Facebook page and I found that he is someone based in the northern part of Pakistan whose Facebook page is made up mostly of, you know, uh, posts almost in, exclusively in Urdu, uh, inviting uh, questions through whatsapp about Islam, uh, matters of um just really art just really everyday matters of islamic life is this halal is this haram that sort of thing uh not much in arabic um also i found that on his personal facebook profile he had issued two denials uh one saying that um uh, his facebook page had been hacked and uh, he doesn't know how this has happened. Uh, he's not responsible. Uh, there's also another Facebook post, again, on his personal profile, saying that, uh, you know, I don't know who's done this, and I, I, can, I only pray that may Allah give them guidance to whoever did this mischief. So these are the sort of posts that he made on his personal profile, which unfortunately, since then, he's locked down. But again, on the 23rd of December on his Facebook page saying that uh, I'd like to inform my friends and well-wishers that my account had been hacked and uh, it has only now become fit for use. So here we have the Mufti who's issued a death fatwa issuing denials and saying that you know, he, he was hacked. Now, I know we, this, we can only go by his word, but do mad mullahs who issue death fatwas normally retract them? Um, and do they normally issue these sort of fatwas just loosely worded without really being on any particular, any particular matter? Because a fatwa is about a very specific question. And if you read this fatwa, um, there's, there's a copy available. It's, it's really very loosely written. It's, it's about this book. That's the only, that's the only thing that comes up. And um, so these were things that bothered me. And then I also came across this uh, recording of a phone call put through to uh, put through to this mufti in um, in Pakistan. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah.
बताया भी था कि मेरे नाम से किसी ने जारी किया है नहीं नहीं हम उर्दू हैं तो उर्दू वाले अरबी में आपको पता है हमें उर्दू पढ़ लेते हैं समझ आ जाती है क्या लिखा हुआ लेकिन ये कि क्योंकि हमें जरूरत नहीं पड़ती ना हमें जरूरत तो तब पड़ती है कि क्या कहते हैं कि जब यहाँ पे भी अरबी लोग हों तो पाकिस्तान में आपको पता है उर्दू लोग हैं तो and in which the mufti pretty much admits that uh he doesn't really speak any arabic he can just barely read arabic as many muslims in 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 the indians of continent can do they can read the script they understand a little bit but he certainly doesn't know enough arabic to write in it and certainly has no need to use any other language other than urdu in pakistan so what was that about why was this fatwa in um in arabic and he also reiterated his sort of you know prayer that may this person whoever did this receive guidance from allah so that's the kind of person he seems to be um the other thing that i noticed that when the the whole reference uh, by imam tauhidi as well as robert spencer talking about the mufti sialvi who was um welcomed in the uk by the theresa may government that was actually a completely different mufti it was a mufti mohammed ramzan sialvi and he was a mufti who had uh, he's he's an extremist mufti very clearly he's shown support for um the 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 blasphemy charges against asia bibi in pakistan if you're aware of that case and uh, that's a completely different mufti so who got this confused was it robert spencer or was it imam tauhidi why is Imam Tohidi, who should be a scholar of Islam, um, so shaken by this fatwa, which he should know is doesn't seem to be a very serious fatwa at all. It doesn't seem to be, from all appearances, uh, written by the person in in question. So why is he taking this so seriously? So these are the questions that I came up with. I. I have nothing I have no accusations to make or any sort of insinuations about whether or not the said mufti was his facebook was actually hacked or not but we can call into question why is imam tauhidi exploiting this so much is it really about his book and ultimately the reason I'm making this video is is a sort of broader point that yes criticism of islam is is necessary and it must carry on the debate about islam is is the debate of our times and it must continue but there's a way to half this debate without just demonizing just a huge group of people um all the time i'm not saying i'm not calling for the babying of muslims or sort of looking the other way when 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 they act in in a, inappropriately or violently but any sort of demonizing that is done based on something as serious as the death fatwa it should be done a bit more responsibly and at the very least be grounded in truth because there are many other voices reformist voices and atheist voices and liberal voices uh, and ex muslims in particular who go to quite some length at quite some personal risk and face death threats themselves uh, when talking about islam so do so to do so so casually is just just struck me as extremely wrong um and so these are these are the reasons why i wanted to talk about this and also also i would like to point out to muslims that you know i'm making this video with abdullah samir and uh, we're making this about an imam who you know a, a scholar of islam who was spreading this about muslims and here you have ex muslims talking about this and trying to clear the name of muslims when there's been mud is being flung in it unnecessarily so hopefully all this made sense there should be some links and shots screenshots that uh, accompany this video and you know tell us what you feel in in the comments uh, thanks thanks for watching